Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Getting Hammered. I am your host, Mary Catherine Ham. I'm here with my co-host, Vic Mattis of the Washington Free Beacon. We are your morning show for any hour, moderately right and moderately reliable. And there's so much news. The campuses are moderately on fire or radically, depending on which campus you're on. We have some news about college debt. So just a lot of college news. We didn't get to Christy Nome, and we have to. But I've got some sunnier animal news for you to close it out. So before we get to all of that, how's it going, Vic? Hello, Mary Catherine. It's going fine. I was driving to work this morning, and you know what? I started noticing this proliferation of new apartment condo high rises with names that are too cute by half. Mm -hmm. So I just put a list together here. Okay. And I'm just going to go by th through them with you. <laughs> this is my favorite. Well, first of all, there's the Rixby. Oh, where do you live? Oh, I live at the Rixby. The okay. Rixby. Yes. And this is just here in Arlington, the Earl. And you have to have the. Right. They have to, I don't like that. Earl, it's like adding. I have I love a it. busy woman. I don't have time I, to say the. And here's my here's my favorite, the Alexa Fitzroy. Okay. Well, I on. have a I have a I have a studio at the Alexa Fitzroy. <laughs> didn't you Didn't you live in that nice okay, building fine. with the weird, complicated name? Which it's it, a, okay. it's historic. So that one's it not is, a poser. Okay, that one was <laughs> okay. So that was that was legit. Famous. What's that one called? That was, that was that's still there. The Kennedy Warren. The Kennedy York, Warren. But it was it was there from the 1930s. Na named after neither JFK or Earl Warren. I know it sounds. It sounds anyone... like a, a presidential library slash Supreme Court yes. justice tribute. Yeah, I lived there. I just by luck found a studio in 1996, eight hundred fifty dollars a month, and it wow. was a big studio, which had a, a room that you could put in an office. And instead, I shoved my mattress in there because I didn't like having an apartment where you open the door See and the your bed. bed is there. But, yeah. you know, because it's like college. I understand a lot of people have to do that. And, and so my wife, you know, had a futon in her apartment, you know. But but this building, I think LBJ lived there when he was a congressman, Bob Haldeman, Harry Hopkins. And then just before my time, this is interesting, Before just before I arrived, the Eberstats, the Caldwells, the Fergusons, they lived there. And then when I lived, when I lived at the Kennedy Warren, P.J. O'Rourke was a neighbor, one I floor low. Know. you. Ann you Coulter. And you Naomi your, Wolf. You, you and your living high on the hog over there. Hillary Kennedy Clinton's Warren. Hillary Clinton's mother lived there too, and that's because they built a new wing, and that was like the fancy wing with all the new fixtures and new pipes and everything else. And we were in the old wing, which was kindly called the as the asbestos wing. Excuse me, the historic wing. <laughs> and the funny thing is, there was a big demand to connect the buildings, but because you know the hall would stop and there'd be a wall. And so you couldn't go through because you, they didn't want to mix us. Of course they don't. It was of like, you know, I was like, tear Kennedy Warren, tear, tear BF down, Saul, tear this, down wall. this wall. Did you live in any sort of fancy, funny name building? No, like I was that? thinking just now that here I was, the sucker, sharing a, a an apartment with my two stoner friends from high school. And <laughs> just kidding. I don't think they listen to the podcast, but they are no fine. longer stoners. They just... Sure, we they were, moved on. They we moved were, on to shrooms. We were in our low twenties, okay? You know. Yeah. But yes, I lived in I lived in not very glamorous at all, Crystal City. Oh. Yeah. But let me tell sure. you something about Crystal City. Yeah. That metro ride to the city, you can't beat that one. Like it's just straight in there, one stop. Oh right. Yeah. So it goes right Did over you, the river. Can I ask you something? Mm -hmm. Did you live in the underground city? No, I lived in the, there's a residential neighborhood next to all the Crystal City high rises. And that's where uh, I lived okay. in, a, in a, are, house, a house that was split into three apartments. Okay. Yeah. Those high rises, the one, they're enormous. Yes. I did not. And I never lived in a high rise. Like, uh, oh, I live on the 40th floor. Yeah. You no, know. But there were no fancy people in oh, that, no fancy in that people. building. I'll tell no. you what. There was one time over the holidays I believe I had, I must have come back from home because it was cold. It was between Christmas and New Year's. And I remember it being cold because there was a gas leak and the gas smell oh, no. was coming from my downstairs neighbor who I didn't know very well. And I kept knocking on the door and I couldn't get a response. Now I have a sensitive nose, so it, you know, I'm, I wasn't sure what level we were dealing with. Yeah, if yeah, this yeah. was something where... It wasn't dangerous, but it seemed right. like a problem. Right. So, right. or was this like Sylvia Plath level? Right. You know? So, but I wasn't getting an answer at his door. So I went ahead and called 
the gas company and said, hey, can somebody come and check on this? So they come and check on it. But the first, because it sounded like an emergency, they shut it off. So they shut, which I'm like, okay, well, the, For guy's, the whole building. Yeah, but the guy's coming out. So no big deal. He comes to check on it. He finds my neighbor, who I guess was just like napping, or oh was he? Na- napping. And one of the burners has been left partly on. So the gas is just oh. filled up and, and, and gotten all over the place. So we air everything out in the He hole. saved his life. Yeah, we air, the, we air everything out. Well, that's not how I was treated, Vic. And I'll tell you why. <laughs> We air everything out. Everyone's safe. But, you know, it's very cold outside. I'm, yeah. I'm talking like below freezing. Okay. And we've got the windows open. Everyone's freezing inside the house. Then I call the gas company back. Why yeah. is this my responsibility? You're the guy who left the gas on, but whatever. Right. Call the gas company back and I say, hey, could you just like snap this back on for us? Because it's very cold. It's, yeah. you know, 18 degrees outside. And they're like, no, you know what? We can do an emergency visit on the holidays to shut something off, but we can't do an emergency visit to turn it back on. <gasps> so no. the entire complex, which is three apartments, it's just a house, but it's three apartments, had no heat <laughs> and no burners for several days. No, come on. Until the gas company decided that it was past the holiday and they could come out and service our Oh, that's housing. wild. Yeah. Yeah, I could see how P- I could see how fellow tenants had mixed feelings about it. Yeah. You know what? I thought I was doing the right thing. <laughs> yeah, I know. And they were they were like, well, maybe he'll eventually wake up and then turn it off, or maybe not. I mean, that's the thing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Look, yeah, a buddy, I, li- a bu- I like yeah. to think I averted disaster. Yeah. My one of my good friends, Stevie Starris, when he was visiting me in DC, he kept on saying that, you know, he could smell something. There's just some gas. And I'm like, no, no, no. It's like very faint. And sure enough, like a pilot light was off. And mm-hmm. so, you know, it just emanates and you gotta you gotta check on those. This has happened to me like, several this has happened to me yeah. several times because again, I have a sensitive nose. Mm-hmm. One time, comically, the guy's there with the sensor and he can't find where it's coming from. And so I used my nose in front of the guy <laughs> with the sensor. And walked around to the back of the dryer and was like, I think it's over here. And he puts the little beepy thing down there and it's like, beep, 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 beep. And I was like, well, I think that's it. You're like Steve Martin in Roxanne. <laughs> There's a fire. I can smell it. That's really impressive. <laughs> this is my talent that that's, gets that's, me nothing, especially with children who have dirty <laughs> diapers. Like, why is oh, this? That's, that's this doesn't help me. No, in those, ca- in those cases, you have to do the reverse. You have to be like Tim Robbins and Shawshank at the end and yeah. like go through the tunnel. Do not breathe out of your nose. Nope. Can't no, do it. I can't do it. Mary oh. Catherine, how are you? I am doing okay. I, you know, I don't have much to tell. You know, things are going pretty smoothly over here. I, ooh, it took a, this is, this is some old people you news right what? here. Uh-huh. Old people news flash. I took a very serious nap yesterday. Oh. Because like, I woke uh, up, I woke up long? very early. I woke up very early. I prepared for a speech, which I gave to the American Beverage Association yesterday. Very nice. And the American Beverage Association, Association of Very Nice People. The Um, other ABA. Yeah, and these are, and this is non-alcoholic beverages. So it's all the bottling companies, the people who who do that hard work to get your Dasani's and Deer Parks and Dr. Pepper's to you. You like how that was alliterative? I planned that. (laughs) That Um, was very nice. So they were a very nice group of people. It was an early morning slot, which is a difficult speech to give. Because you don't know what everybody was up to the night before. Right. right? And this is a breakfast then. Yes. And the breakfast was great. The food was good. So there was a crowd for the food, even if, if there's not going to be a crowd for me. Right. But it is a little bit of a tough room. I got them. I got them going. I have. Okay. Um, before we get into the nap, I have a couple logistical questions for you. Mm-hmm. All right. Do you personally eat before your talk? Not much. No. Yeah. I like to, I'd rather kick back because yeah. then I'm not, I'm not like comfortable eating. It's more like work eating where I'd rather like be like enjoying and relaxing. Yeah, no, it's not enjoyable pre-speech. No, so it's not. you have to you worry about wait that. till Worst. after. Um, were the I people also... were the people allowed? Were they finishing breakfast and having yes. coffee listening? Or are they eating and clinking while you're talking? They're eating and clinking a bit, but it was uh, not uh, it was yeah. not problematic. It was a it was a cash yeah. gathering. I felt like I could yeah. be and I'm a casual speaker. I do a conversational a speech yes. with a lot yes, of silly of jokes in it. So yeah. <laughs> so it was fine for me enjoyed it very much. My my weakness as a public speaker is that I can never be hydrated enough. Oh, and so sure. I'll, I'll get up there and I'm just like, I don't want to drink water the whole speech yeah. because that makes you look weird. Right. Not as weird as they talked about it making Marco right. Rubio look that time because I thought that was like overplayed. 
but you don't want to do it the whole time. So, but yeah. I did have, yeah, I had a little catch in my throat a couple times. But anyway, apparently I really exhausted myself because I came back home and I was reading a book. I'm rereading The Confederacy of Dunces. Oh, yeah. Because it's been probably more than 20 years since I've read it. And I thought, mm -hmm. I'd like to I'd like to revisit Ignatius. So I'm on that. And I read for a few pages and was like, Steve, I think I'm going to snooze for a bit. I was unconscious. I was deep so out and i'm a fairly light sleeper steve kept trooping back into the room to check on me and nada nada <laughs> okay how long like two hours oh man yeah I, if i nap 20 minutes that's like enough for me and i can't i don't like that feeling of waking up and being disoriented oh i was very disoriented oh i dreamed oh. It was, oh, yeah, we, no. It's, we were in REM sleep, my friend. Yeah, no, I hate that. It, and you're, my, you're, you're groggy. It takes a while to shake it off. Yeah, you wake up. You hope uh, somebody picked up the yeah. kids from school. You don't know. I, I avoid naps, but okay. Well, so, glad, you made, glad you made it through. Look, I think, I think that I needed it. Something was yeah. telling me I needed it. So yeah. I, as the, as the woo-woo Instagram moms say, you got to listen to your body. Okay? Yeah. So, no, I, that's I, what I, I listen did. to your body. That's what I did. All right. <laughs> Speaking of, we shouldn't sleep on uh -oh. all this drama from the college campuses, Vic. I don't think they were sleeping either, particularly 4 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Oh, my goodness gracious. Okay, so the big uproars right now on the college campuses are on the UCLA campus yep. and the Columbia campus. Right. UCLA has been the site of like I would say probably the most violent clashes. Oh, yeah. There's a reason for that. Mm -hmm. UCLA did basically nothing to restrict the encampments yep. at their campus. As a result, those encampments at times were, I believe, checking IDs or checking ethnicity and religion and beliefs for access to various parts of campus. Oh, come on now. No, they were running, che they were running checkpoints. At one point, there's a video of... It's Maoist. It's... No, there's one... At one point, there's a video of a Jewish man being surrounded and chased specifically yeah. for that reason, mm -hmm. because he decided to assert that he could use parts of campus that they didn't think he could, could use. I believe that UCLA is the site of another video where a Jewish woman is beaten unconscious. Yep. So this happens for several days. Then counter protesters decide they're going to take matters into their own hands because parents of Jewish students, by the way, are calling UCLA. I believe yeah. we have a clip of this calling UCLA police saying, can you help with this? And they're saying mm -hmm. we've been told not to interfere. Yeah. By whom? Wild. So then the counter protesters decide they're taking matters into their own hands, which not advisable. Not good, right? Yeah, like, so, no, and then it also it gives them the fodder. They want that. They they want they want the brawl. Yeah. They want the brawl, and it gives a little wiggle room for politicians to say both sides. Right. Well, so there's know, brawling. Enough was enough. There's brawling, and predictably, the media is like, "Look, look what the pro-Israel people have yeah. wrought." I it's saw like, that. well, like you're you're welcome to report on this. Could you also report on the several assaults and attempted yeah. kidnappings and like hostage holdings that happened yeah. before that to give it, as they say, context? Nonetheless, UCLA is sort of paralyzed by this. And they I believe that the police started to move in and dismantle there. As with all these things, the longer you let it go, oh. the more force is going to be needed from law yeah. enforcement to remove everyone. So they go, they go in to remove all these folks. UCLA has canceled classes because colleges are worthless. Yeah. Worthless. Thanks for the money. They've canceled campus, campuses, uh, can, canceled classes over in Columbia. They have removed everybody from Hamilton Hall. Interestingly, everyone was all up in arms. Like the mayor and the police of New York are making this a dangerous situation. Yeah. Because they're confronting these protesters, these peaceful protesters, they're always peaceful. Peaceful, always peaceful, peaceful protesters. And then they showed up with overwhelming force that was found to be very yeah. inappropriate. Yeah. 
And then they breached the building via a ladder up into the second uh, floor. They had a bear cat. They didn't like that either. So militarized. Well, it looks like the NYPD. And by the way, I'm very I'm very open to the argument that police overstep sometimes that these can get too violent when they're trying to remove people. However, these people must be forcibly removed bodily because they yeah. have created this situation, which is not right. speech. Right. So it sounds like the NYPD did a great job. No, you know, you are, you, I hate to say that, but you, you kind of hope that they use just a little bit more force to show these brats, you know, <laughs> you know, because, because I'm just saying, because, you know, they're all being released. There's mm-hmm. no consequences for this. Well, it, that's not, yeah. we're not entirely sure. Oh, because re- one thing I read, again, this all shifts quickly, but mm-hmm. one of the things I read is that they were being charged with large crimes. They were right, being like burglary. They were being charged with burglary. Yeah, for which some of them could be problematic. Mm-hmm. By the way, I love the weeping over like, don't ruin these kids' lives. Oh yeah, I'm worried for the kids' safety. Yeah, yeah. don't that- ruin their lives with these charges. However, I just want to assure them. Bill Ayers still has a job, and he literally yeah. tried to kill American soldiers yeah. and was foiled only by his own incompetence, and right. he's never apologized for it, and he works on elite campuses all the yeah. time. So right. you'll have a home. Right. You'll have I, a home. I, I, was, I was thinking about <laughs> the great Beatles song. She came in through the bathroom window. That's what the cops did. You know, they, <laughs> I don't know if there's a bathroom, but they went in there. And the big thing is why so many police, this is what you were saying, right? Why, yeah. why this is why it's overwhelming force. This is ridiculous. It's disproportionate force because you know what, Mary Catherine, if you just sent in a couple cops and told them and they said, please disperse and leave, they would probably listen, oh, they to, totally yeah, listen. They would totally mm-hmm. listen to them. That's the whole point. When you see this many officers with riot gear, the bear cat and everything else, as you mentioned, then, well, you have a choice. You can do it the easy way or the hard way. And some, particularly in UCLA, did it the hard way. And like, like you said, and other people have been saying, you know, people on the left, they've been always trying to, you know, first you coddle these people. And right. then also you give them a little bit of leeway. You give them what they want. So, that, you know, then, and then they'll stop. If you give them what they want, then they'll be happy. They'll be quiet. They will leave. Right. right. And it goes back to, you know, I don't know you know, late nineties, early two thousands with the, uh, the world trade organization, you know, right. demonstrations. Right. And then of course, Occupy Wall Street. Right. right? And Antifa later with George Floyd and all that stuff. That's not the lesson. I mean, the lesson is that you give them an inch, they'll take a yard or a mile, whatever. Speak- and all, all I can think of, by the way, was, you know, the great line from the Godfather, Clemenza, who says we should have stopped Hitler in Munich. You know, you're going to wait till they take over half, you know, the continent, yeah. you know, from the Arctic circle to the Sahara from the English Channel to like the suburbs of Moscow, and then you're going to go in. Yep. And this is what happened. This is a analogy speaking, obviously. Yeah. Analogy. <laughs> analogy. <laughs> Let me be UC- clear. Yes. No. Speaking, UCLA had but, the, you know, I mean, really. It, there were several it, it colleges. There were several colleges who certainly don't know the lesson. Northwestern negotiated with oh. its encampment to a, a bunch of stuff at like great yeah. price tag. For instance, adding a bunch of free ride scholarships specifically to Palestinian students. So we're just right. doing like ethnic scholarships. Yes. Now. Ethnic. And, and not to mention faculty that they're going mm-hmm. to hire, mm-hmm. you know, I'm pro, sure this will result basically. in fewer encampments in the future. Brown also negotiated with its encampments oh. and they agreed to have a vote on divestment because they weren't going to have one divest. This is divestment in investments that are adjacent or at all having anything to do with Israel, which is like all investment funds. So they're going to have a vote on divestment. And as someone I believe on Twitter said, do they think this ends when they vote? No. Yeah, of course not. They just do this again to make you vote. Yes. (laughs) More. They want. Yeah, no. And and they'll, they will always want more. Right. I Um, I don't think it's, it's ever enough. and, And by the way, all of this is just, a bunch of hedge fund dudes, kids, yeah, cosplaying yeah. Gaza residents. Again, like, it's, y'all it's are like... not, y'all are not oppressed. Okay, right. you're inside in Ivy League schools, mm-hmm. opulent mm-hmm. administration building with tons yeah. of vending machines. Although they, and then they argue that they need humanitarian aid. Yeah, 
They need food brung unto them. Mm-hmm. Brought. <laughs> they even, by the way, and I think I mentioned this. Uh, the meal plan, though, the, they, uh, the PhD spokeswoman, yes. Slutsky, she, she was demanding, you know, she's on a meal plan. So she, has plan. She, has she has rights. She has to be served. She has yeah. to be served. But this is the same argument as people make about Hamas or that or the, that the Gaza residents and Hamas make, which is we observe no rules. You bring food to us. Yeah. You observe all the rules. Right. And we are the morally righteous ones. And it's like, no, by the way. Spoken dispro- like true authoritarians. Yeah, disproportionate force actually can make things go more smoothly as you saw right if it's if it's disciplined if they're doing the right things they're showing you that they will not be pushed around yep and if proportionate force is not necessary to be moral right Right. like after october 7th this is the thing they're just they're just analogizing everything Mm -hmm. analogizing everything after october 7th israel didn't need to nor would it do the same thing that Hamas did to its people because it won't right. hit civilians. Right. It will do more traditional warfare. Yeah. But these are the insane things that they ask. Another thing that occurred to me in all of this is that we talk about all these kids talk about privilege all the time, right? Yeah. There's a there's a great and we talked about the clip yesterday of a white chick just slinging her water at a black man at UNC. They talk about privilege all the time. It is the ultimate privilege that these children, they're mm-hmm. technically adults, but let's call them children because they're acting like them and their administration, which really are adults, but act like children, Mm -hmm. that they can act like this, Mm -hmm. ignore the entire point of college because they have made this the point of college, demand to be- Right, it's not studying. No, demand to be catered to. They have the privilege to act like children. And you know who doesn't have that privilege? The janitors inside Hamilton Hall. Yeah. Who have a job to do. And by the way, we'll be cleaning up these disgusting little privileged brats mess, which is yeah. significant. Like who kids. Were, they, who kids were, leave a mess and this is they have right. to clean up. The they kids were mess. held forcibly against their will in some cases. Mm-hmm. You know who else has to be an adult? The cops. Right. The cops have to act like, act like adults because the administration refused to. And these folks don't have the luxury of acting like children because they have to go make a living for their families. Mm-hmm. They are, they are, and you, you listen to these kids and they're having this temper tantrum. I saw one and it was either at UT Dallas or UT Austin yelling at the top of his lungs against the, the cops who were just standing around trying to make sure that, you know, nothing gets out of control before they eventually shut down the, the encampment, I assume. But he was, he was having this breakdown about these, you know, these, these fascist cops and they, you know, they hurl every invective against these guys. Right. You know, the KKK that was being, you know, hurled at the, you know, the cops are like at UCLA as well. They have the chance down, right? But I'm not sure how many of them can actually argue the finer points. <laughs> you know, I think, I don't know if I mentioned this, where Lawrence Jones uh, on Fox was yep. interviewing a woman outside of oh, Columbia's gosh, yes. gates. And she just kept that. He's asking her these questions about, you know, uh, October 7th, the rapes and Jewish students who say they feel unsafe. And she just kept on saying false narrative. How do you feel about them taking over the building right now? I think that um, their cause is a just cause, and I hope that the administration really hears their demands. I think they're just demands. Do you feel like it was right to hold three of the janitor workers hostage with inside of the building? I think that's a really false narrative. That's what they, the janitors are saying, that they weren't allowed to leave. I, I think that that's a really false narrative. Even if the janitors are saying that, you're saying that that's not true. I think that it's a really false narrative that the students took anyone hostage. How do you feel about some of the Jewish students saying that they don't feel safe here on campus? I think that this is also a really false narrative that's being promoted. Do you think October 7th and the attack that happened is a false narrative? Do you believe that some of the women were raped? My colleague just came back. One, one so more. this is what happened. Can you get out of my face, please? So, so this is what you, you see at these these protests. Once you get into the nitty gritty of what happened on October the 7th, the rape of women, um, what's happening there, they they deny what happened. Uh, as you know, that is, is actually factual now that the uh, janitorial workers were blocked inside of the building. And anytime you bring that up, the Jewish cause, the Jewish people, the kids that feel unsafe on campus, they deny the reality of it, guys. It's false narrative. No, what does I, that I mean? Like, what is that? What is false narrative. And, and, yeah. 
Yeah. And that, but that, they won't elaborate because, you know, he's like, so you're saying that they're lying? False narrative. It's just, it's a false narrative. They, they you know, the brainwashing has been successful. Yeah. And they need to get to who it is that's telling them and teaching them these things in the academy. And not only that, but also providing all the actual logistical support. All those fancy camping tents. I know. I mean, they just spring up out of nowhere. Did all, did all these kids just happen to have tents and vests and goggles? They so, came from gas masks. Where right. do they all come from? And it's, you know, where does they get, they might get them from Students for Justice for Palestine, but where do they get them from? Yeah. And ultimately, it's probably like Soros and whoever else. Yeah, there's somebody tossing money at yeah. it. Did you see the heroes we need in addition to the NYPD cops who very calmly dismantled uh, the occupation of Hamilton yeah. Hall? The dude bros of UNC. There's something, by the way, I just want to point out what a what an honest broker I am, Vic. Yes. Because on several occasions, I have had to praise University of Florida. All right. And now, and now I'm being made to praise UNC. Yeah. But I just want you guys to know that even when my emotions would turn me against these schools, my principles say, and the facts say, that I must praise them. So in this case, UNC frat guys, second look yep. at them. Second look at them. There was an incident where the pro Hamas, pro pro Palestinian yeah. protesters are bringing down the American flag to replace it with a Palestinian flag. And it's somewhere yeah. in this process that a bunch of frat guys come to the flagpole in the middle of campus, surround it, and hold up the American flag so it does not touch the ground because, of course, the protesters will treat it like trash. Oh, they'll trample if not burn it. And they don't care. So these guys surround the flagpole and they are being yelled at, having things thrown at them. And I just love there's a great picture of it that probably won't win an award because it valorizes the wrong thing. Yeah, America. It valorizes But it should win America. an award because yeah. these guys are calmly standing in the middle of all this, holding up the American flag, and they are central casting for what yeah. in 2020 these same people said these are the villains of the whole world they yeah. got we got a popped collar we got a hooters oh, yeah. t-shirt on we got loafers we right. got those little shorts that hit right above the knee the ones we were talking about that are yeah. like the the most sexy version <laughs> oh, mm. khaki khaki shorts we have ball caps like it's just right probably croquis on their glasses i'm guessing it is <laughs> these are the guys that these people hate so much right, right. but you know what i hate to break it to y'all they're the good guys here they were the good guys yeah again i like to go back to students and obviously there are a lot of outside agitators who had entered these campuses i get it but at the same time you know there are admissions officers who are looking for for kids who just don't want to study and, and, and do good, but rather be real sort of, you know, agents for change and not for good change. Right. And what you saw here at these schools is it's, it's a great advertisement for like, hey, you know, come here because these people, these students, they, they still believe America is a good place to live. Yeah. And they're surrounded, even if they're outside agitators. These people are like living and walking among us and they hate us and they hate our way of life. They and really it's do. Really, it's really disturbing. It's disturbing that these frat guys had to be the ones to do this. Yeah. And that they're like, you felt like they were in the minority in this situation. Oh, yeah. And I should add, uh, and, and they're not, right? The, the campus is full of right. normies, right? But it is scary to stand up against a mob like no, it's this. very scary it's, it's um, very easy to just keep your head down and i'm i'm glad that they did it there were another yeah. there were another brave couple of students who stood in front of hamilton hall and positioned themselves at the door to try to keep yeah. these guys from doing more damage yeah and those guys i was real worried for because yeah it was three against hundreds right and and and, and, and you're you're testing people who claim to be peaceful protesters but as we saw in ucla you know, that is not always going to be the case. Yeah. And I'm just not sure, like, globalize the Intifada guy is mm -hmm. necessarily going to stay peaceful right. while, while you're confronting right. him. It reminded me, my brother went to UNC for his and graduated. He went for his second two years of college. And there was an incident there that he ran across very early in his days on the UNC campus that is just, just so such a good illustration of how campuses work. Yeah. There was one man standing street preaching, pro-life guy. Had some sign signage, like whatever. He was on campus doing his thing. 
one guy and he was surrounded by people yelling at him. Yeah, I'm sure. Convinced that he was somehow an affront to them. Yeah, he, he was, probably made them feel unsafe. He was the threat. And my brother was like, do you guys not see? I mean, they're like, they're like slamming his posters down yeah, and like yeah, physically yeah. menacing him. Yeah. And my brother, my brother said, like, none of them can see it. They yeah. all think that they are the good guys. Right. And 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 when you see when you, when you see an angry mob like beating up, as you mentioned, this this girl who is uh rendered unconscious at UCLA, do they really see themselves as oh, you know, they're the oppressed? doing this, yeah, you know, and, and, it, and it's funny with the, you know, it, it, with the, fr the frat bros situation, the left has hated them obviously for a long time. Uh, you remember that story about the Duke lacrosse team? Oh, you know, yeah, where do you I? remember uh, the Rolling Stone story about UVA? In not, that fraternity? not to toot my own horn, just kidding. That's what this show is for. But the Duke lacrosse stories was yet another story that I was correct on when the rest of the yep. press was wrong. Just, just and saying, because I know the geography yeah. of Durham and I was like, this don't smell right. Yeah. And, you know, what price do they pay? They just move on to the next story, you know, and and and, and go after them, you know, rel relentlessly. And, I, you know, you talk about how it's a big deal for you to give props to you and see it's a big deal for me. I'm not a fraternity guy. So just in general, you right. know, I went to you, know, we, you go to a Catholic school. There's no Greek system. So, you know, not my thing. I had one friend from high school who was big in fraternity, the hazing, the rushing, the whole deal, his bigs, his littles, his little littles, the whole deal. <laughs> OK. Have at it. Anyway, props to them. I oh, want to say, yeah. Go, go oh, sorry, sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. I did want to add the the last story about this because there's just like a lot of threads here. Oh, yeah. No, it's a lot. The lawsuits have begun. The lawsuits uh -oh. have begun. I may yeah. have mentioned it yesterday or the other day. I can't remember, but uh, from someone, Jewish is, students. someone is suing Northwestern. Three Northwestern yeah. students have filed a class action lawsuit against Northwestern, alleging the university breached its contract with students by failing to enforce protest rules during the encampment on Deering Meadow. You better believe there are going to be more. Yeah. And this yeah. is what they listen to. Uh, also, huge shout out to whoever started the GoFundMe for the frat guys at UNC who now have about $300,000 <laughs> <000 laughs> to, to their name to show, yeah. to throw a party. Yeah. So. And to throw a party. Yeah. That's great. By the uh, way, is GoFundMe going to shut that down? Like, ew, these patriotic croaky wearing guys. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. My one of my favorite videos was on the other side. You know, we recorded the last show right before the Columbia takeover ended, mm -hmm. uh, the building takeover ended. And there was a student who was, you know, they were they had entered into Hamilton and then they got surrounded by the cops inside Hamilton and they couldn't get out. Right. And 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 one yells out. He goes, he goes, yo, I got finals. Oh, my God. The woman said that. I got finals, yo, uh, is what the man or woman see, said. See, they they deserve freedom of movement, but no one else does. Yeah. That's the rule. All I can think of is, have you ever seen the movie Bronx Tale with Chaz Palminteri uh, and Robert, long, Robert De Niro? Long ago. And there's a scene where these bikers, there's like Hells Angels types, they go into this Italian bar in the city, and then they trash the bar. And Chaz Palminteri is the neighborhood boss. On the From the inside, he closes the door. And he locks it from the inside. And then he turns to these guys and he says, now you just can't leave. <laughs> and, that's, and that's what I felt like, except for the ending was different. The reality yeah. was different. Okay, oh. fine. I do, I do feel like I have to remove myself from going down these social media rabbit holes. Because when you see these absurd tweets by people on the, on the left, this Professor Jacoby from Columbia or Rashida Tlaib, or Jamal yeah. Bowman, and you see all the people who are supporting them, I have to remember, we have to remember that based on polling, a majority of people, even in every age group, are on the side of Israel. Yes. Even coming to, when it comes to going into Rafah and ending Hamas's reign of, of terror. But, you know, you, you get so wrapped up in, in, uh, in their world, and it's just, it's so upsetting. So that's my that's my advice. Although I mean, you know, and they they do they all live in that little echo chamber. Now, I don't know what Colbert said the other night, but prior to the police going in, the police had shown up, and he talked about the police showing up, and he just said that you know, remember First Amendment rights, and so far they haven't said anything harmful or done anything. You know, they're 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 peaceful protesters. He said supporting Gaza, and then the whole audience cheers. Mm -hmm. That's that world. Yeah. Well, and and here's the thing that is, and this has been happening since 2020, right? And before, you know, where, and the, the tea parties come to mind where I actually wrote about for the Weekly Standard, right. the 
systematic attempt to make tea parties into something that they were not. Right. Uh, there was, when they talk about a couple signs being taken out of context, which is what they claim is going on, much of the media claims is going on with these groups. And I just, it's not true. Like, right. <laughs> they're not being mischaracterized. Yeah. Yeah. The tea party really was full of well behaved people. Right. Who occasionally would say or have a sign that said something slightly problematic, or there'd right. be a little person is going, standing the, nearby. At any rate, they tried the to media make, was going to go after them. They tried to make yeah. them seem as violent and scary mm -hmm. as possible, usually right. for merely yelling at town hall meetings, which, like, I'm in favor of yelling at town hall meetings sure. mostly. I think sure. that's uh, an important part of democracy. So they made tried to make them look really, really bad. In general, I think that there shouldn't be huge punishments for minor civil disobedience in the course of a protest, right? You're, mm -hmm. you're doing your First Amendment. I don't want cops trumping a bunch of charges up on you, right? But yeah. we absolutely cannot have a standard where one side gets to do whatever it wants yeah. and the other side, nothing, okay? Right. So, And then people will say, oh, well, January 6th. Okay, obviously, have you noticed yeah. how those folks were punished? Right. To the greatest extent of the law. And then someone like Chris Hayes, who believes oh. that you should drag net information to get people who were at January 6th, even if they were peacefully protesting. Suddenly. He will say, I don't know why everyone's making such a big deal. People have occupied college buildings forever. Oh, so you're just telling me you were doing January 6th forever yeah. and you just think it's OK. Yeah. And, and to throw on top of that, Jamal Bowman saying, you know, this is this is still a peaceful protest. Breaking windows is no big deal. No big deal. You know, I'm sure it would be windows. no big deal if it were the Klan, right? Yeah. Well, again, and they, they, they just turn it around. So that's ridiculous. And it is amazing. And, you know, so again, pro-life marches or Tea Party, you know, rallies, you know, the media is always looking for the one wacko and you'll find them, well, you and know. But then in this case, you know, a lot of these places, they will try to avoid so you're not, you know, we're fortunate that we get to hear through various other forms of media, oh, thank you know, goodness. the chance, the chance of go back to Poland, go home settlers, you know, and pro, of course, or Al Qassam's next targets. Yeah. Pro-life activists are a really good example because their, their work truly, like truly yeah. the things people have been in trouble over and been prosecuted oh, yeah. to the greatest extent over. Oh, they get, they get the are, book thrown out. Are actually peaceful yeah. <laughs> and they, they are treated differently and they are treated differently because of the cause that they embrace right, right. and that it, cannot be how it works because right, that is double standard speaking of speaking of the end of democracy as so many on the left like to talk that that is a problem so anyway that's why we spend a lot of time talking about this because that whoa drives me up the wall that double can standard. i ask can i ask you something what's up did you like president biden's address to the nation about the unrest that's happening across the country did that happen no, no, actually, it didn't happen. No, but I thought it was going to happen. I'm just anticipating it in case, you know, what happens we can, when the, we can talk when the about recording how great comes it was. out. When the recording, when, when everyone's listening to this show, we're like, yeah, how about that? That was really something. He really put them in their place. No, but wait, maybe we can put a clip in here from the what future. So let me be clear. Peaceful protest in America. Violent protest is not protected. Peaceful protest is. It's against the law when violence occurs. Destroying property is not a peaceful protest. It's against the law. Vandalism, trespassing, breaking windows, shutting down campuses, forcing the cancellation of classes and graduations. None of this is a peaceful protest. Threatening people, intimidating people, instilling fear in people is not a peaceful protest. It's against the law. Dissent is essential to democracy. But dissent must never lead to disorder or to denying the rights of others so students can finish the semester and their college education. What do you what do you what do you think is happening here between him and Newsom and Schumer? What, what, what's you going know on? what? I just think they're scared. I just I just think they're scared like the administrators are scared because it would be obviously politically wise when you are trying to get the independent voters in this country not to yeah. pull a lever for Donald Trump. Right. It would be wise to side with like the 95 percent of people who side yes. with the frat guys who held up the American right. flag. It'd yeah. be wise to side with them. Yeah. But they won't do it because their loudest activists 
believe deeply in this cause. Now, right. that cause sounds pretty gross the way they're talking about mm -hmm. it on campus. It sounds pretty hateful. Yeah. And you should stand up again against it just morally, but you should also stand up against it because it would help you out with normal people. Right. But I, I just think they're all cowards. They have lost their way against yeah. these young people. And they believe, I think, that they take up more of the party than they right. do. I think they're worried about Michigan, but oh, mostly yeah. just scared. Uh, yeah. And like, by the way, of course, that's not a province only of lefty politicians. The right sure. is scared of its base. Well, no, well. this is like a this is like a January 6th situation for them of how do they they're trying to, you know, thread the needle here and see on the one hand, oh, you know, they they went too far on the other hand. And so they're they're I, they're afraid of alienating their base. And Biden apparently is going to give a talk at the Holocaust Museum next week, next week. Yeah. Well, it's I, he's waiting a little too long. I mean, you know, obviously Trump is out there and yeah, they're not yeah. responding and they think that that that's going to work. I think it's a bad idea. For well, them. well, what did Biden do this week? He's waiting on the speech about anti-Semitism. But what he did do is forgive oh. 317,000 more nice. loans for college at, to the tune of another six billion dollars. Now, these are to the art institutes students okay so that is not the same demographic as has ivy league sure debt sure but it's all of a piece which is people who are taking out loans who knew they were taking out loans who got some kind of college education which many people do not have the right. luxury of and then demand that the people without the college educations pay them yeah i well again he is really desperately going after their vote even though he knows that this thing can get you know, um, uh, you know, totally reversed and shut down by the courts, right. right? But he's going to do it now, and certainly it's great press to go around to these young people, that demographic. He's desperately trying to hold on to, right. and so it's like, look what I'm doing for you, and also marijuana, as you know, <laughs> he's lowering that standard. So people are like, this president is great. I'm going to go and vote for him. But I, you know, there's a lot of people out there who you know paid off their loans or worked very hard to. And now these other people don't, they're going to find that to be very unfair. Well, and like, I will, I will say there's a, there's a, a better argument to be made against something like the art institutes say, yeah. they basically say that the institution falsified data and misled sure. students about the promising career opportunities they might have. I would also argue you could say that about many of these elite universities <laughs> who make all sorts of bad claims about yeah. what you're going to be able to do with your intersectional puppetry. Major, major right like they they should yeah. they should yeah. talk about that well, more they, openly they, they can get a job at the university teaching yeah and then they, and then yeah this is like you know this is what they do <sighs> nowhere so, else I don't so know that's that's yeah. more money out the window unconstitutionally likely so uh get excited about that what else do we have on our list for today vic you mentioned that congress passed a new definition of anti-semitism oh that's right congress did something they did Congress went and voted on something. It happens so seldom that, you know, we forget to update you guys. But they did pass an anti-Semitism bill with broad bipartisan mm -hmm. support. Measure passed 320 to 91. 21 Republicans and 70 Democrats voted against it. The yeah. bill titled the Anti-Semitism Awareness Act would mandate the Education Department adopt the broad definition of anti-Semitism used by the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance. They're probably pretty reliable in this area. <laughs> Yes. an intergovernal intergovernmental group to enforce anti-discrimination laws. The international group defines anti-Semitism as a certain perception of Jews, which may be expressed as hatred toward Jews. The group adds that rhetorical and physical manifesta manifestations of anti-Semitism include such things as calling for the killing or harming of Jews or holding Jews collectively responsible for actions taken by Israel. Well, it sounds like a lot of these protests. <laughs> yeah. I mean, one of the things that, that a lot of these protesters didn't anticipate, I think, uh -huh. is that it turns out when you specifically, vocally, very obviously discriminate against Jewish people, uh -huh. you're going to run into some civil rights issues of your own. Like this is, it's not just you who's standing up for civil rights. Right. You're actually blocking some people's. Well, and, and, and one, of the, one of the things is, of course, that we've talked about before is how these demonstrations have sort of devolved from, again, end the war, ceasefire to, you know, free Palestine to we want all of it and uh, settlers go home and we are Hamas, right? We're pro Hamas. And so, I, I, for example, I saw Tom Cotton 
That's how he refers to them as they're, they're, these are all Hamas supporters. Right. Our, our friend, John Fetterman, I just saw, he said what these demonstrations make clear is that there are, there are two sides. There's pro-Hamas and really pro-Hamas. Yes, I did enjoy That's that. That's funny. Okay. so I enjoyed that. You know what? Sorry to circle back to college students, but I am annoyed, I know, I am annoyed yeah, with I them. And I, I just on. think that it's it's important that we treat them with a little bit of disdain. Yeah. Uh, I think that's actually some of the public shaming is important in this process mm -hmm. because yeah. like on campus as a out and out white su supremacist, you would right. be socially shamed in addition to punished. Right. Oh, so Coleman Hughes, who went to Columbia, he tweeted great this author, about Columbia and Barnard students. And he said, Columbia and Barnard students are not stupid in the low IQ sense. They had good test scores and good grades in high school. But in my experience, many of them were deeply lacking in the common sense department, which is a separate thing altogether. To give an example, I remember a friend once told me that she had learned in class that the concept of a woman's biological clock was a myth and that women really don't need to worry about declining fertility as they age into their 40s and 50s. She accepted this as true. Most of us have a mental instinct, which for a thousand reasons would instantly call bullshit on that idea without even having to look into it. And it is that mental instinct, not IQ per se which was severely lacking among my Columbia Barnard peers. Okay. I thought this Amazing. was interesting because I agree with him about yeah. this, but I think it goes even further. All right. And it goes to this idea that I have that it's, it, you have to be really smart to be this stupid. Yeah. The thing they do on college campuses now, this group think, this requirement that you think yeah. that everything that's normal and everything that has been known in the past must be wrong in order right. to be a creative thinker or something right. is actually the opposite of thinking. So what so what the woman here has been told yeah. is that, ooh, biological clock is an icky misogynist idea. Right. It doesn't Therefore, matter if it's a fact, right? right? It's an icky misogynist idea used to keep you down. Therefore, you must assert that it is wrong and work backwards from that. Right. That doesn't help you actually assess things. That's just not thinking. Well, I mean, yeah. And, and this goes back to, you know, where have these kids been radicalized? Right. Well, it's these teachers, it's these professors. And then, you know, obviously fellow students, but they get it from somewhere. And then beyond that, it's parents who either, you know, encourage this or they don't care. And or, you know, they, they coddle the kids and every, they, they've done that. everything they do is great and amazing and they yeah. support it. And it's like, hold on now, you know, and. Again, as, as you mentioned, it, it is hard to get into Columbia. It's something like a I three know. or four percent acceptance rate, and this is who you're allowing into the campus are these, you know, are, are these kids who are obviously very impressionable, and you have really crazy faculty who are UCLA Medical School. Well, and right? you're, they you're, had a required class where you know where everybody oh gosh, had yes. they, the professor wanted you know the the students to get on their knees and 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 thank Earth Mama, Mama Ooh. Earth. I mean, this is insane, and also into chance of free Palestine. Anywhere in medical school, that's really yeah. important for medical school. You noticed this during COVID too, where it was like the group think would assert something crazy, which is shutting down schools for long periods of time is not yeah. a problem. Putting kids on screens oh, yeah. for a long time yeah, every day is not a problem. Right. And masking two-year-olds, not a problem. And you would say, no, what you need to do is mount proof for an intervention because my common sense tells me Closing school, wearing masks, being on screens all day is bad for kids. And yeah. they would say, mm, nope, I'm going to need your, I need your proof. I need yeah. you to prove that. That's right. Right? That's so it's like, it's the same with the biological clock. She's just like, my conclusion is biological clock, not real. The facts don't matter. You need to deal with this from now on. My crazy assertion. Yeah. And then, and then we think, well, then she gets to the real world. She'll realize, but no, the real world is now changing and it's for the worse. Bending for these guys. All right. Bending uh, over for these guys, am I right? <laughs> you wanted to uh, talk about Christy Nome. Yeah, look, guys, I'm sorry. If you got kids, go ahead and earmuff them up on this it's, one. But, um, but it's, 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 a, it's an old yeller situation, but go ahead. It's not an old yeller situation. Okay, though. elaborate, because I listened to this secondhand, and I thought it was. All right, go ahead. Okay. That's not. I I'm going to decide how explicit okay, I want to get about this. Explain. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Fine. It, this is this is truly some people will not want to hear this. Um, Governor Christie Noem wrote a book that is out now. In this book, there is a an anecdote about well, there's several anecdotes about killing several different kinds of animals. Like a, a goat was mentioned. Yes. 
I, when I first saw the reaction to this, I thought when I saw goat, I thought, you know what, maybe this is like a farm situation where like a lot of animals have to be put down. Yeah. Things and happen. people who don't own farms don't understand yeah. that. People right. who aren't ranchers don't understand how right. you make these decisions and why they need to be made. And people are very sensitive. About yeah, it. Think about ranches, by the way, sick cat, sick, if you have a sick cow, Mm -hmm. it's not good for the right. cow exactly so yeah. i understand that so i go to read with an open mind that and figure out like what's going on but then there's the part about a dog okay she had a hunting dog the hunting dog was young i think a little over a year old the hunting dog had a name some kind of terrier or something um i'll have to look up the breed at any rate the dog was rambunctious the dog at one point attacked someone's chickens. Mm. Now, if you're training a hunting dog, attacking fowl is actually a thing that is in the dog's brain. Yeah. That's what yeah. that's what they do. Yeah. That's the instinct that you're trying to hone as you're training the dog, right? Now, certainly those chickens belong to somebody and perhaps they need to be compensated for those chickens. That I understand. Christy Nome wrote a story in a book about how she offed the dog after yeah. this incident. She also, I think, at some point claims that it nipped her. Okay. So clearly a dog that for whatever reason, yeah. as Steve says, problems flow down leash, for whatever reason, was not behaving. Like a commander, like a commander. Mm -hmm. yeah, but, but, yeah. Mm -hmm. This is wild. This is wild. You know who you know who wants a failed hunting dog, right? That you just yeah. haven't gotten under control yet with your training? Right. Uh -huh. Many, many families. <laughs> many families would take okay. a goofy failed hunting dog. Right. The idea that this was necessary is wild to me. And beyond that, this is a person with political aspirations. This is a person who has made it to the top tier, the top echelons. Yeah of our political society. She is a governor of a state and she had this story in her life and she was like, I think I'll write it down in a book. Yeah, it went through an editor and an agent and they all thought it was fine. And so it's out there. As somebody who does not own pets, except for fish, which is not even that anymore, I my understanding was that the dog was a danger to people and so she had to put it down. That's what I heard. That's what but. she heard. I, I, I read I read a pretty decent summary. From Christy Nob. I heard it from Christy Nob. <laughs> <laughs> That's how she's spinning it now. She's no. spinning it now. So, so the dog was a So I read a pretty yeah. thorough, like large segments of it mm -hmm. were quoted <laughs> in Rolling Stone of her oh, version. No. <laughs> so, and I was like, ready to be convinced mm -hmm. that something was going on here that right, counted right, right. for this. Her words did not suggest that this was okay. necessary. Now, and, and then the goat was another issue, but, and the goat was like, she missed them. She only injured it and then she had to go up and then oh God. it was like, a, it was a messy hit. It and gets worse. What, no, yeah, that, that's what really gets my goat. Uh, <laughs> no, it, it just gets worse. And like, yeah, she was on Hannity talking about it, which once, oh, yeah, once, well, yeah. once you, I'm dug, sure he gave her a lot of leeway. Well, once you've dug this hole, like just stop talking for a little while. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's, this is, let me just be clear to everyone. This is the thing we say in politics yeah. when you want to joke that someone has done the worst thing imaginable, right? You say, yeah. oh, my my opponent's so terrible, right. he shoots puppies. It's literally true. It's the thing we use. Yeah. And she yeah. was like, you know what? Put it in my autobiography. This is This is, you know, why, you know, you don't see like dog catchers these days running for office because you know they're they're always unpopular. No, look, the look. Dog again, I'm open to the idea that sometimes think taking measures is necessary, right? Yeah. This doesn't seem like one of those times, yeah. and this is one of those things, by the way. Which if she had been quiet, and please don't take this as a reflection on how I feel about what she did, because you know this is worse than rehoming commander. Okay, like you, yeah. like rehoming is one thing. Yeah. You couldn't handle the dog. You rehome him. You couldn't handle the dog. You shot him. Like, it, yeah. okay, different. However, <laughs> on a base political level, uh -huh. what she did is so bad that if you just shut up about it for a while, when people retold the story, people wouldn't believe it. Right. They'd be like, no, you must. Be oh, no. That up yeah. Her. Well, like, I'm just, yeah. <laughs> They'd, they would think you were lying, just like when I tell people what Ted Kennedy did. 
And I'm like, no, no, no. Oh. He really did leave her. He really did leave her in the car right, right. for many hours that he drove off a bridge and he left his passenger there to yeah. die while he set up the political rollout for right. his having murdered this woman. Okay. That's what happened. It's so bad that he kind of gets a pass for it because people don't believe he could be that bad. Mary Catherine, I have a question for you. Has this deep sixed Christy Nome's chances of becoming the next vice presidential nominee? In a normal world, yes, absolutely. Like even even <laughs> like even Cat Turd, who is a yes on Twitter, Cat, yeah. Cat Turd was like, "Nah, man, this is bad." Okay, <laughs> I think that Trump can do whatever he wants and would do whatever right. he wants. Mm -hmm. However, he has an instinct for what people hate. Yeah. And he will know that people hate the idea of killing dogs. By yes. the way, by the way, That's Mitt right. Romney is like, I just put my damn dog in a luggage carrier, like right. on top of the car. And that was like, it. It was no big deal. It's no big deal. You know, again, just Mitt Romney was always a, a victim of just bad timing. I do have an interesting scoop for you, and I save it for the end of the okay. show, which Ooh. is a, a source tells me that Trump is down to three finalists for a VP. Okay. Am I, 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 am I one of them? Am I one uh, yes. Of them? You yes. and me. Yes. Okay. Because I've been wanting that residence. That, <laughs> the Naval Observatory. The VP residence is the hotness. It's really, yes. It's lovely there. And I can't, there's no, I haven't corroborated it. Again, I like to stress supposedly, this is just what I heard, that the three finalists are Marco Rubio, mm -hmm. Doug Burgum, and J.D. Vance. Really? Yes, really. That's very interesting. No Tim Scott, no Carrie Lake. I'm just telling you what I heard. No Tulsi Gabbard. Yeah, no, i just telling you what I heard. Okay. More okay. so Rubio and Vance, I think. But wow, we will see. I could be wrong. The days wrong. of little Marco. Yeah, I know. Well, quite they a, put quite that a aside. Turn. By the way, it would be so amazing to have traveled with J.D. Vance on the arc from intellectual oh. hillbilly translator. Yeah, yeah. And I say hillbilly with love because I'm from yeah. the South. Like, come on, guys. Ivy League hillbilly translator J.D. Vance, who I was on CNN with in 2016 to VP for Trump. That would be, it's a journey, my friend. It's it a is, journey. It's it's quite a journey. I, I hmm. We'll wait to see. Okay. I could, be, I could be completely wrong, and then I will uh, yell at my source. You know what? This is the beauty of this show is that we will trumpet that you were right, were right and we will ignore that you were wrong. No, I'm just kidding. We do try to be accountable on we this do. show. We do. Okay. And then the last thing, Mary Catherine, is not the bees. You you sent oh. me a link about the bees. We got we to gotta talk about this. Okay. Okay. So I just saw this clip all around the, the internet. An Arizona beekeeper, Matt Hilton arrived at Chase Field Tuesday to deal with a swarm of bees, and he ended up staying to throw out the first pitch. The Diamondbacks, Arizona Diamondbacks game against the Los Angeles Dodgers, was delayed nearly two hours Tuesday night when a swarm of bees began to gather at the top of the protective netting behind home plate. Oh, oh, Diamondbacks man. Vice President of Baseball Operations Mike Rock got a call about five minutes before the start of the game. Senior manager of events said, we have bees landing on the net behind home plate. I said, how many? He said, hundreds. No way, thousands. And I knew we had a problem. So they get a call into Hilton. He's a branch manager for Blue Sky Pest Control's Phoenix office, which now has a lot of good advertising. Wow. Minor leagues to the big leagues. Now Hilton, who was his at his son's t-ball game when he got the call, <laughs> joked after the game. It's pretty cool. But Hilton's night wasn't over yet. As a thank you for his beekeeping efforts, he was asked to throw out the ceremonial first pitch and the crowd roared. Okay. We're That's gonna insane. Play, we'll play a clip of this, and they'll have a little bit of play-by-play. -play. Hero of the day, Matt Hilton is his name, and he has lived it up. They were chanting MVP. They were playing I Need a Hero, and he was that hero. He got the place clear. And just a moment ago, he threw out the ceremonial first pitch. They just announced that he's going to be available for interviews in the press box at 845. Matt Hilton, 37-year-old, father of four, movie star, good looks, now a superstar. Let me just tell you, this guy's such a boss. Mm -hmm. He's up He's up on a cherry picker, smoking out these bees, removing them safely, being the hero that we don't deserve, and he gets down from this job 
and he walks out onto the field and dramatically flips his beekeeper helmet <laughs> and raises his arms and like he's like getting the crowd hyped even when he was on the cherry picker he's getting yeah. the crowd hyped this guy took his moment and ran with it and i love it so much it was so good that i am almost tempted to believe he secretly planted the bees there on the net <laughs> i mean that's some scary stuff that's like that's like you know the end of the movie my girl scary yeah. That's a lot of bees. If, <laughs> or or the or the or the Nick Cage movie. The Nick Cage movie. No, no, no. Uh, I like I like that you went with the millennial trauma. Thank you. All, yeah, let, I know. We I know. all Nick experienced that hand, with but, Macaulay you know, Culkin. Macaulay, Macaulay yeah. Culkin. Oh my gosh. That's so scary. We were all scary. there for that. So okay. congratulations to Matt Hilton, who will no doubt have a lot of social media followers, followers if he should want them, and probably ads for business. bee removal, and his business will do well. And hopefully his kids T ball team does well. I he seems like a person yeah. who deserves it, as do these frat guys. Let none of them be milkshake ducked. I just want to move on and think that they're lovely. That's that's what I wish, Vic. And on that note, <laughs> Mary Catherine, that wraps up this episode of Getting Hammered. Remember, you can subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, and YouTube, and you can follow me on Twitter at Victorina Mattis. I'm MK Hammer on Twitter, MK Hammer Time on Instagram. You can follow the show at Getting Hammer Podcast on YouTube or Instagram, and you should, to see our lovely faces, although not today because we're remote, but another time. In the meantime, keep the bees away and hold up that American flag. This has been a Nebulous Media Podcast. Thank you for getting hammered responsibly. Bye.